the history of the Boykin Spaniel is actually really interesting. Uh, it started with a stray dog of all things. So um, uh, a dog basically followed a guy home from church in around 1910, Alex White, and uh, he took a real liking to the dog. And as, as the dog and him started to spend some time together, he realized that, man, this dog is a pretty trainable dog. And he had a friend named Whit Boykin. And so he asked Wit, who trained some dogs and um, did a lot of work in the field with dogs, to say, hey, let's see if maybe this dog has some potential and we can do something with it. So after a little bit of time of working with the dog, Wit agreed. And so they bred the dog to another, another dog of really unknown origins. And those two dogs were Dumpy and Singo. So the first litter of, of Boykins came to be and they continued to try to work with the breed and improve it. They found characteristics they liked. They ended up crossing the breed with uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, Water Spaniels at times, some Springer Spaniels, um, but they were trying to make a breed that would end up um, really good in the field for birds, upland birds, ducks, uh, and also for turkeys. So for them, that was, that was a big priority and trying to get good health genetics from some of the other breeds and put some of those characteristics into the dog that he found by good fortune, um, turned out to be a really good thing. And so uh, in 1977, you know, fast forward a few years, there was a, a vet who went to the Boykin family and said, hey, I've, I've got some concerns. And Dr. McCoy said, I've got a lot of dogs coming in that people are saying are Boykin Spaniels that look nothing like what you guys have been trying to breed. And so he said, you know, I think we need to take some action on this and maybe create a society or a group to help perpetuate the breed further, put some guidelines and a breed standard around it. And uh, really, Dr. McCoy, who didn't own a Boykin Spaniel, but had interest in, in advancing the breed and making sure that the breed became something that the family wanted it to be, he really deserves a lot of credit for that. So between a number of members of the Boykin family and, um, and that vet from Camden, uh, they formed the society in 1977. They sent out letters to members uh, or people around the U.S. that they believed to have Boykin Spaniels and basically asked them to send information back and let them know that they were forming a society and they wanted to create a foundation stock uh, of, of Boykins to, to breed future generations from. So they sent out a, a, all these letters. 677 ended up being fit the breed registry that they wanted to, to perpetuate. So they were asking for information like the dog's height, um, was their coat curly, flat, wavy, straight, um, what color were their eyes, what color was their coat, chocolate or liver, just so that they could document what the breed looked like. And from there, you know, they took these 677 dogs and then said anybody who breeds with these dogs will then become uh, part of the society's foundation stock. And it's grown today to over 40,000 registered, well, right at 40,000 dogs. We'll probably hit 40,000 dogs this month. Nellie's into her eighth season now? Actually her ninth her season. Ninth season yes, yeah, she's she's eight. She'll be nine February twenty eighth. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's quick it's amazing how fast the years yeah. go by. My first goal was sent, um, obviously, you know, to teach her how to uh, understand and relate that that scent was a turkey and it was her goal to break that, that flock up. But it quickly changed from that, you know. Um, I still say scent is her number one go to. But um, then it was the eyesight, you know, visually seeing turkeys, visually being able to identify them and, you know, put that as that's what we're after. Um, but in year two is when it all came together for her. Year two, she understood the vocabulary. And I think that's what truly makes her different. Um, she now not only goes off the scent, the eyesight, but she'll literally, when you're walk, working her in the woods, she will stop every time you call and she's waiting for a response just like we are. And she understands that response. And that gives her the key to be able to go in and, and find the flock. So really it's three different areas. You know, we're talking smell, you know, scent, um, eyes, and then the hearing. And really I have that out of order. I'd say it's smell, uh, the hearing, and then, then believe it or not, the eyes. And, that, and that's what she trusts the most. And she's almost like a human that evolves in their hunting skills. 
I mean, obviously when we took her as an eight month old puppy, she was a puppy and you know, she did very well holding still and being attentive, but there were times where if we were calling in birds, she might wanna chew on a stick, you know, or maybe move a little bit more than what she was supposed to, but she was a pup and overall she did fabulous and beyond our expectations. And now, I mean, she's just total business, you know, there's no messing around. It's almost like fun to see how she has evolved from an eight month old puppy with her first turkey hunt to what she is today. Although I hate to think about her getting older, but <laughs> that's just a fact of life. And she has matured into a you know, very smart turkey dog. She truly is all business. Yeah, she is. The thing that's been cool for me the last few days is the, to finally get to see a Boykin Spaniel participate in turkey hunting. Um, interestingly, one of the reasons the Boykin Spaniel has a docked tail uh, is to help it be a better turkey hunter because with turkey hunting, obviously the, the Boykin Spaniel is designed to, or uh, was bred to help break up the flock, return to the hunter, and sit patiently and quietly and not disturb the flock so that uh, a turkey could be harvested. So a, a Boykin Spaniel with a tail, and if you've ever seen a Boykin Spaniel, you'll know their tails, they're pretty, pretty active. So it would be bad to have a full tail trying to hunt turkey and have that swatting leaves back and forth and probably make it really hard to actually harvest the turkey. Um, so I did get to see a dog this week. It was awesome to see it get out, get on the scent, um, track down where those birds are at, bust them up, and then give us an opportunity as hunters uh, to find some areas where those birds flush, sit down, uh, make some calls and see as that flock is trying to gather back up, um, could we intercept one and harvest one as well? So it's, uh, it's been a real fun experience. So our fall turkey hunting in Pennsylvania just wouldn't be the same without dogs. Um, if I've had an opportunity to harvest birds, maybe during archery season, in fact, just this week when I was in archery stand, the first day of the fall turkey season, some turkeys came by and someone asked me, well, were they in range? And uh, they weren't, but I said, well, even if they were, I didn't want to shoot the birds. You know, I wanted my dog with me because if I don't have the dog there, I just feel like I'm, I'm cheating on the dog, you know, because it's all, it's all about having the dog with you. That's what makes the experience. It's, that's what fall turkey hunting is to us now. We can't imagine being without our Boykin Spaniels in the woods. I would love to see the trajectory that we're on continue because the breed is getting better and healthier. It is more competitive in field events. Even people who train labs, goldens, and have been running in some of these big field trials for years and hunt tests say the breed has improved so much over the years. So I think if we can stay on that, on that course that we're on right now, continue to, to focus on the health of the breed, um, advancing good genetics, and finding people who are willing to do that, I think the breed is going to continue to grow. And I think it's gonna to continue to stay healthy, which really, very important to the, to the Boykin Spaniel Society. We, we, well, I think Kelly elaborated on that. You know, we, so many times, and this, again, this may sound silly, but we, we ride to work together a lot, um, and we're coming home. Which one's going to go to you first? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the excitement. We can't wait to get home to be able to, to be with them. Um, if I didn't have that companionship with Nellie through the years, um, you know, Again, it's two weeks that I hunt with her, but training, I don't know the training really ever stops. Um, we just spend so much time out in the field. She's made me a better turkey hunter, by far. Um, you know, maybe in an area you're not even thinking about when you say, is she, uh, what would I do without her? I, I wear hearing aids. I can't, my hearing has suffered terribly. Um, I don't know that I'd be much of a turkey hunter without her. And again, another aspect to the turkey dog, um, once she has them broken, I'm calling. I understand the calling part. I can do all that. I can't hear the responses. I can't hear the walking in the leaves. Um, I'll focus on Nell, Nellie, um, and where she's looking. Um, I've had, I've been out there where I'm looking 180 degrees the wrong way, and and see her turn. At that point, you need to trust her, and I'll I'll turn with her. And so many times she saved me um, and gave me an opportunity to harvest a bird that I wouldn't even know was standing behind me. Um, but you know, there would be a hole in my heart without her. Uh, there's just no doubt about it. Yeah, there definitely would be a void. You know, I'll put the hunting aside. It's just the day-to-day -day living. Like I like to take walks or go trail running. The dogs go with me. You know, I'm very lucky that they don't run off. They can be off a leash and they stay within sight. 
you know, with going to the stream and watching them swim or throwing frisbee in the yard in the mm -hmm. summer. You know, they're just part of our lives. I can't imagine coming home and not having the wiggle butts yeah. <laughs> at our door because, you know, they're just, they just add excitement. They give us so much love and devotion that I can't imagine life without our, our Boykin no. Spaniels. Wouldn't want to.